we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Kyle, we're back. It's a game week. We're doing in-week episodes again, which means we have a Friday episode for the first time in a while. Uh, this is fun and this is exciting and we're going to have a good time. All right. No, no, no beer we, to crack. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not drinking two tonight. I got work tomorrow. Um, well, it's, <laughs> we do, we do the beer crack on the Ohio state episodes, not the national episodes. Mm -hmm. That's just going to have to be reality. All right. This is our Snoop picks episode here. So we pick six games outside of the Ohio state game. Um, or if it's a bye week, we pick seven games. Yeah. Uh, but this week, this week at six, this week at six, so we got six games outside of the Ohio state game. Uh, we picked against the spread, uh, cause sometimes that might be a little too easy to pick, pick just straight up. Who's going to win. So we, we picked the spread as the lock-ins from CBS sports pickums. Yes. Uh, so, so lines obviously can change. Cause I think uh, we've seen. I think I've seen as of we're recording right now, Ohio State and Akron it has dropped down to 48 and a half points, which kind of oh. makes me question my decision from uh from <laughs> the Ohio State episode there, but I digress. Um, but yeah, these these are locked in over at CBS Sports Pickums. I, and I would actually and take Ohio here. State at 47 and a half. But I wasn't willing to take them at 50 and a half. Hey, Spikes. Right. Oh, Spikes and Esquire in the chat. Um, whoever answers me, uh, you, you know, we, we didn't have a guest picker lined up for this week. No one wanted to pick the Akron week. So we're going to need input from the chat to pick for the uh, for the guest picks. So uh, if uh, y'all are up for that, just let us know. All right, they are ready. All right, uh, let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start us off. Uh, let's do the nooner. A uh, little surprise is a noon game, but here we are. Uh, Clemson and Georgia, uh, neutral site, neutral site. I I forget where sort of. it's at. It's Atlanta. Is it, is it the, Mercedes? Is Atlanta? Okay, it's a home, it's a home game for Georgia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Georgia is a 14 and a half point favorite over Clemson. Yeah. I understand. I understand like looking at this, I'm just saying Clemson has, there's two things, two things I look at here. I understand Clemson has a, has a really good defense. And uh, not sure about the, uh, not sure about the offense, but the defense is supposed to be really good. And obviously Georgia, very, very good team expected to, do great things this year. Um, contention to be a national champion at the end of the year here, but a lot of, a lot of off the field stuff happening for Georgia uh, yeah. this last off season. Um, could that get in the way of for the Bulldogs this year? Well, that's yet to be seen. We'll we'll find out as the year goes along here. So it's. But yeah, I think we're only a, talking me, about me, this those game. Are the two, two, to me, that's the two headlines here. Or yeah, yeah, headlines. yeah. I, I agree. So which way are you going? I think, I think, I think we're going to go with Georgia. I just, too much talent. I just think there's too much talent on this Georgia team. And Clemson still hasn't proven to me that they have an offense that can keep up with Georgia. So I'll, I'll pick the Bulldogs. I'm going to go with Clemson. Um, it, I, it, for, I, Georgia seems to be having a very, um, eventful in a bad way off season. I don't know how ready they are for this game. And I'm not saying Clemson's going to win it because I do think Georgia, Georgia is a much more talented football team. Let me, let me say that off of the top on paper, Georgia should kill Clemson. I don't know based off of the off season that George has been having, how focused they are. But I also don't know how, uh, you know, is Clemson good enough to take advantage? I don't know. Esquire says down in the chat that he thinks Clemson sneaks back in with a meaningless 
pick, you know, you know, or excuse me, a meaningless score at the end of the game to backdoor cover it. Um, let's see. I think Clemson sneaks back. Okay. Well, our two, our two guest pickers are splitting on this one, Kyle. Um, guys, I'm going to, uh, I'll just, I'm going to, I'm going to favor Esquire this time because he said it first, but if you guys differ again, I'm going with spikes next time. <laughs> All right. Uh, next game also at noon. Uh, this is Fox's big game for the, for the week. Penn state on the road to West Virginia, uh, noon game. And Penn State is a nine and a half point favorite in this game. I like I I think Penn State wins this football game. I do. Um, for those of you who aren't from that area, this was once a big rivalry. Um, eh, that's not. I don't know if it was a big rivalry, but it was a rivalry of sorts, wasn't it? It wasn't it wasn't like Pitt, West Virginia by any means, but it was a rivalry of sorts. Um, but yeah, I week one, I, I feel a strong I have a strong bias towards the underdog in week one, just because I don't feel I don't feel like we know anything about anything right now. So when in doubt, pick the underdog, especially in September. So I'm going to I'm going to go West Virginia here, although West Virginia to cover Penn State to win. Yeah, last year, Penn State won 38-15 in Happy Valley. I think it's going to be much closer. Um, Nine and a half points. Yeah, I'll I'll take I'll take the Mountaineers to cover. And I think and I think uh, both I think chat here uh, has also picked the Mountaineers. Okay, I mean, Duncan okay. even came in and said, I'm not listening, but eat shit pit. We're yeah. not talking about pit, um, but that still feels but like a very pro West Virginia sentiment, <laughs> regardless. Right. So uh, we 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 have a sweep for the Mountaineers on on uh, game number two. All right, next up here, uh, we're heading on over to 330. Our only three thirty pick for this week, other than the Ohio State Akron, which 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 you can listen, which which you can listen to the to the Ohio State Akron uh, episode um, that was posted on Thursday, but we're talking about Miami and Florida. Uh, Miami is a two and a half point favorite in this game on the road at Florida at Florida's um, stadium here. Spikes down in the chat says Austin's fighting Gators to win outright. Let's see what Esquire has to say before we hand that one over. Um, I am once again going to, I don't like Miami this year. Um, I'm not, I'm not necessarily calling for an upset here. Um, Although, Hey, why not? But I, I I always feel like Miami's overrated. So if you give me an opportunity to pick Miami as the favorite mm-hmm. with a legitimate opponent as an underdog, I'm gonna take that every time. You want a fun you want you want you want a fun stat here, Jared? Lord, uh, the past five games, last five games. Again, I know it doesn't matter, it's a new season, but this is just fun. Last five games for Florida, 0-5. 0-5 their last five games. Miami, the last five games, was 1-4. <laughs> so both, both, team, both teams looking to redeem themselves after a pitiful um, end, of their, end, their, end of their season. Uh, if you remember, uh, Rutgers beat Miami in in their bowl game uh, last last season, and Miami and Florida didn't even go to a bowl game. Uh, so both both teams looking to make a statement here. Two and a half points to Miami on the road. I, uh, I'll take Florida. 
I'll take Florida with those points there. So yeah, give me, so, give me Florida. All right. And now Esquire and Spikes have split. Spikes says to pick the Gators to win outright, but Esquire says he's picking Miami. Um, I gave, I gave, uh, when they split last time, I, I gave it to, to Esquire. So I'll give it to Spikes this time. Um, shameful performance by both team ends with crystal ball fucking up clock management at the end would be fitting. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it looks like we have a trifecta for, uh, the underdogs for a second straight for a second straight round of picks there. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, we have our, our final three yeah, games. Very are bad. Seven, well, our next two games are our Saturday night games. Uh, first, we'll talk about Notre Dame taking on Texas A&M. And it is on the road at Kyle Field, which, by the way, is an awesome name. Uh, eh. Notre Texas A&M being preseason ranked 20 is a two and a half point favorite over seventh ranked Notre Dame. Who do you got in this one, Jerry? Um, I feel like both of these teams are pretty big question marks in my head. No, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know who either of these teams are. They both feel like teams that come into the season with a fair amount of hype. Neither of those teams end up completely failing. Like they don't fall off the face of the earth the way Miami does, but they also never really do it. Um, That being said, I feel like Notre Dame's a playoff team, even if it's like on the edge of the playoff, like the 11th or 10th seed. Um, I don't feel like Texas A&M is, but that has probably more to do with the fact that they play in the SEC than it does who they are as a team by themselves. I don't know who these teams are. I'm once again just going to pick the underdog out of a uh, acknowledgement that I don't know what the hell these teams are. I agree. So I, I, I agree. I agree with what you were saying, Jared. Uh, now I'm going to use one of our, um, one of our old sayings, when in doubt, pick the underdog. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to pick the underdog. All right. Uh, Spikes and Esquire have once again split. Uh, I picked Spikes last time they split. So I need to pick Esquire this time. So yep. I'm going to go ahead and just plop that right there. Uh, the All guest, right. the official guest pick is going to Notre Dame. Um, that is our third straight unanimous pick. All right. Um, the second night game and only only because of pure location. Uh, well, UCLA I mean, take- is it technically a night game? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, UCLA, it is for us on the East Coast. UCLA and the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. Um, I'm just sorry. I'm just looking at 13 and a half. Sorry, I was making sure I was reading that number right. 13 and a half point favorite for UCLA. <laughs> Hawaii's already played one game. They've already played one game, um, beating Delaware State 35 to 14. I'm sorry. Why is Hawaii playing a team based in Delaware? That at least they didn't at least they didn't have to um they didn't have to go all the way to <laughs> all the way over to Delaware. Yeah, but Delaware had to go all the way over to there. They did. And they, they had did, plane yeah. troubles. Yeah. And you see, yeah, UCLA having to, UCLA, you, 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 why, are you, why are you on the road against Hawaii? Because it's Hawaii. Yeah, I, I, if I was UCLA, if I was UCLA, I would do every other season in Honolulu. I'd make it a tradition. You sell that to your recruits. That's why. Because <laughs> it's, it's Honolulu. Yeah. Why not? 
It's not like UCLA is going to a bowl game this year. We'll get a trip to Hawaii in. Mm -hmm. I and I hope Pacific I'm Islanders too. Yeah, good I'm, call, Esquire. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I just don't really have much confidence in this UCLA team this year. I, that's totally it, fair I think, assessment. I just said they aren't going to go to a bowl I'm, game. I'm going. I'm going to pick Hawaii to cover. I think UCLA UCLA should win this game, but I, I think it's going to be closer than UCLA wants UCLA wants it to be. I feel like that much travel just isn't good for an athlete, regardless. I mean, we saw. I'm, I mean, Georgia Tech had to travel too, so I'm not trying to make excuses for Florida State, but we saw what just happened to Florida mm -hmm. State. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, jet lag is a very real thing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take the jet lag plus Hawaii plus 13 and a half. Also that they, they do, they do that thing, which is, I wouldn't be on the other end of that thing. Um, or did you both pick Hawaii? So, yep. They both picked. Yep. They both picked. Hawaii. Gosh, that is that is four in a row. Yeah, yeah, no, we're we're we're, here. we're going for a disaster. All right. All right. We and shouldn't last, be agreeing yeah. this much. Yes. All right. And the last one is LSU and UCLA. Oh, UCLA. Yeah, LSU and UCLA. Wow. Let me try that one more time. LSU and USC. There you go. Sunday. Thank you. Sunday night. I hate week one. Why, why, why do they do this? I, I mean, I know why, but it, I, I don't like it. Sunday night. Um, it is in Las Vegas. And LSU is a six and a half point favorite. Now, Kyle, yeah, before it, you say, before you give your answer on that, I want to do a quick ad break. If you want to avoid these ad breaks, uh, you can go to uh, sloopcast.com to see all of our links. But more specifically, to avoid the ads, you want to go to patreon.thesloopcast.com, where you can uh, support us financially, avoid ad breaks, get premium access to our Discord server. The Discord server is, however, free. Um, but there is a premium section to it. You can, anyone can join our discord server at discord.thesleepcast.com. Uh, and anyone can support us financially at patreon.thesleepcast.com. And if you're looking for any of these links, because maybe you're driving or you just can't jump on a web browser right this second, you can find all of our links by going to thesloopcast.com. Here's that ad break now. Okay, Kyle, how you feeling? How you feeling about LSU USC neutral neutral field playing this one in Las Vegas? So a lit maybe that's you know that's a little bit of a home field advantage for USC. It's not as dramatic as Georgia playing in Atlanta. Yeah, but it is considerably. I mean, you could take a bus from Los Angeles. I'm not saying. I mean, they probably will. You could easily bus from LA to Las Vegas. Uh, Ellis, you obviously going to have to get on a plane. You're playing yeah. in the Western time zone. Not that, you know, LSU is only two. They're, they're central, right? They're only two time zones away. That's not dramatic, especially since they're playing at night. Their body clock's going to be at like 530. I don't think there's any severe jet lag issues to worry about here, but it is much more of a home game. Presumably for USC. That being mm -hmm. said, LSU fans have might you might have more LSU fans in the stadium because, hey, how often does a Louisiana state fan have an excuse to just go to Las Vegas and not have the yep. wife be mad at him for it? Honey, I'm going there for the football game. I don't know <laughs> what you're so upset about. I always like to go to these road games. The fact that it's in, in Las Vegas is, is totally based off of nothing. It's just that's where they happen to be playing, honey. I don't know what you, you think the problem is. Yeah. I, My God, I mean, LSU I mean, I mean, fans I mean, in Vegas. Yeah, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's going to be a I mean, disaster. Yeah. I mean, obviously, LSU losing Jaden Daniels, uh, who's pretty much their entire offense last year. Well, uh, it's good thing LSU didn't passing. lose their quarterback, who was their entire offense last year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
their back, their backup quarterback. I feel like he's been there for LSU for a long time, but um, Garrett Nussmeyer um, is going to be their quarterback. I kind of my my gut my gut is is LSU to cover here. I just I just have this vibe um, whenever USC plays in a neutral site against an SEC team, they don't do well. I I always have that visual of that pre pre game where you see USC getting ramped up. They're they're like acting like they're being pulled back and getting ready to take on Alabama, and then they just crap the bed. I, I have a feeling it's I could we could see something like that uh, again in this game here. So six and a half, so only a touchdown. Uh, I, yeah, I, I feel I feel good picking LSU. Right, we have two picks for LSU. Um, Kyle, I don't, take take a look at the board. Take a look at, for the YouTube people. For the excuse me, for the non YouTube people, we've had a board up on the screen this entire time, detailing out our picks. Tell me what you see out of my picks. Uh, you've always picked the underdog. This game will be no different. Week one, uh, we are going straight ticket for the underdog. I'm sorry. I don't know who any of these teams are yet. We don't know who any of these teams are yet. Why would I pick a favorite? Why would I pick a favorite? These Vegas lines are based off of recruiting stars and they're based off of uniforms. Remember that Vegas numbers are not their reflection of reality, but rather a reflection of perception. Vegas's goal is to get a 50 50 split on either side so they can just collect the VIG. That that's their goal to not lose. Fair enough. That's why no one will remember your name. Listen. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, that is it. That is all of our picks here. Uh, Jared going straight underdogs picking Clemson, West Virginia, Florida, Notre Dame, Hawaii, USC, and Akron. And I picked Georgia to cover West Virginia, Florida, Notre Dame, Hawaii to cover and, uh, LSU and Ohio state to cover then. So, Yeah. Kyle, we had three differences in week one. That's three pretty, differences. That's pretty steep. It's pretty good. It's pretty that steep. Is. Yeah. All right. Pr- appreciate uh, week one yeah. picks are purely vibes based. See, and I'm just I'm trying to avoid the vibes because ultimately when you when you pick based off of vibes, you pick based off of uniforms. And that's a mistake. Um, yeah. So I'm going going straight underdogs. Now, Kyle, we have an additional game that we like to play. And we have given this, we've been playing this game. I think this is either the second or third year we've played this game. But we never really gave this game a name before now. Mm -hmm. So Kyle and I got talking and then we didn't get, we didn't think of a name we liked. So we got the chat involved. Shout out to Buckeye Esquire, who's currently in the chat, who came up with this name. I present to you Chaos Theory. We call this game Chaos Theory. Here's what we do. You have to pick a team to lose. Some of you might be, oh, is it like a survivor pool? No, it is not. No, it is not. This is a game totally unique to college football. In this game, you have to pick a ranked team to lose to a non-ranked team. In other words, chaos. Team chaos. We are picking team chaos to win a football game. We score this based off of the rank of the team you uh, you chose to lose, but reversed. In other words, if you pick the 25th team, 
to lose. You gain to win one point. But if you pick the number one ranked team to lose, you stand to gain 25 points. And, uh, you know, I'll even, I'll even, for the YouTube folks, I'll even zoom in because I have a, I have the cheat sheet right here on the scoring system. That, that, that's your translation. The eighth team in the country is worth 18 points. The 18th team in the country is worth eight points. It, it, luckily, it worked out like that. Made, made the cheat sheet a little bit easier. But that, that's the game. So in other words, you have to choose a team to win. You have to choose, choose a ranked team to lose against a non-ranked team. The higher the ranked team is ranked, the more points you stand to gain. If your team loses, you get nothing. Good day, sir. Uh, picking for picking on behalf of the guest this week is Buckeye Esquire. His choice. I will give you after the ad break. Sorry, th these are shorter episodes. This ad break's coming uh, a little bit closer to the other ad break. Apologies for that. But we do need to get two of these ad breaks in. Cliffhanger. Absolutely. That was that was a. Ryan Seacrest level cliffhanger right there. Uh, no big intro. Sloopcast.com, excuse me, thesloopcast.com to find all the links. Patreon.thesloopcast, discord.thesloopcast. We'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, Buckeye Esquire chose Penn State. He, cho he chooses Penn State. Uh, Penn State is currently, according to the AP, the eighth ranked team. And therefore, should Penn State lose, the guest pickers will gain 18 points. Kyle, right. who did you pick? Uh, I'll go with what I picked uh, in our in our slip picks here. I got I got Florida uh, beating Miami. No, it's not a lot of points, but. It feels it's safer. Points. It's safe, it's though. Points. I mean, Esquire takes a pretty big swing picking the eighth team to lose. I'm going to take an even bigger swing. We'll see what that is here in a second. Very low on Aller uh, and a low scoring game. Franklin can fuck it up. Uh, you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah, you're not wrong. But picking Florida, I mean, that that's a good value. Kyle, you stand to gain seven points, and Vegas says that's only a, a two and a half point dog. That's a good value pick. You're you you have you don't stand to gain a ton of points, but out of the three picks, and we haven't seen mine yet, I obviously know what it is. But out of the three picks, you're the most likely to hit. Now, speaking of Swinging for the fences. My pick is Georgia. Clemson is not nearly as talented as other Clemson teams we've seen in recent years. Dabo still refusing to use the transfer portal. Mind boggling. But Clemson. He... Oh, go, uh, go ahead. Never mind. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So this is not nearly as talented as a Clemson team as we've seen in recent years. However, they still recruit really well. They still have really good talent. And again, I get the impression from Georgia, from uh, the news coming out of Athens, at least, that I don't know if the Bulldogs took their offseason all that seriously. Clemson's a really right. talented football team. They're not nearly as talented Jared's as Georgia, but I'm swinging for the fences here. I'm yeah, going for Jared's all of it. The fences. Yep. Uh, I, I stand, to, I'm picking the number one team to lose. I stand to gain 25 points. And again, like I get a team in Clemson that recruits five-star players to pull this upset. And again, they're not as deep and they're not as consistently talented as the top end teams. There's still a lot of talent there. This is not a Mac school. Um, wait a minute. Clemson's ranked. I literally can't pick this. What am I doing? 
What have I done? What have you done, Barry? I, it's week one and I already fucked it up. <laughs> it's week one and I already done fucked it up, Kyle. There are there are some other games. There are some other games if you're interested. I suppose there are. Um, <laughs> you lose. Good day, do, do you sir. Want to pick, do you want to pick the 730 kickoff on NBC? Well, why don't you just tell me who it is? It's the Bulldogs taking on the Wolverines. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I'm going... Kyle, I'm going to steal your answer because it okay. was my second pick anyway like it legitimately sure. was um, i see how it is yeah 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 no i'm I'm absolutely cheating <laughs> it's not because it's a good answer uh so Kyle and i will start this off tied at the very least we'll see if the guest pickers can get an early jump on us and that's that's it for chaos theory. We'll, or as the people watching YouTube can see, we have this set up to run all season. We're going to keep score. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I also have a scoreboard for the sloop picks, which I, I suppose I can bring up real quick. Uh, we're we're, we're going to take the sloop picks very seriously this year. Last year, last couple of years, I don't know if we followed it week to week nearly as closely as we should. Um, but there's our slew pick scoreboard chaos theory already struck the chaos theory segment. It, 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 yeah, it, it, I, something could have gone wrong. It went wrong. Um, that's not, that's not chaos theory though. That's, that's, um, Moore's law, not Moore's law, Murphy's law. Moore's law has to do with processors, but we don't need to talk about that right now. Um, but there's a sloop, our sloop pick scoreboard. We're going to track all of these things very, very closely this year. We will crown a winner. I'm going to win. Just letting you know right now, I'm going to win. Kyle, that's the end of today's show. Do you have anything in Kyle? It was good. I it enjoyed good. that. Feels it was good to be back. It is, it is so good to be back. Um, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I don't. I know that there's a lot of people talking about the, um, uh, the Netflix, um, series, uh, untold sign stealer with, um, that's a terrible name. It, it is with Connor stallions it's very uh, i personally there's too much there's I, I too many have, words i there. personally have they should have yeah, just gone with sign stealer yeah i personally haven't seen it yet but i know there's a, I a lot of Netflix. people are talking about it a lot of people are talking about it right now it's just it's just more fuel to the fire i i canceled netflix after they canceled bojack horseman and i'm still upset about it uh <laughs> Because that's a healthy response to a show that healthy people love. Um, anyway, I love BoJack. The, uh, yeah, it's whatever. Like, I was out on that documentary Is the second I realized it was basically done by Connor Stallions. Like, mm -hmm. oh, so it's just going to be a PR piece then. This isn't being done by some sort of documentarian wanting to tell a story. It's Connor Stallions telling Connor Stallions story. Eh, I don't care. Although I did see that someone pointed out he hilariously screwed it up. Esquire, he admits to so much. What does he care? He has nothing to lose. Like, he didn't do anything criminal. He has nothing to lose. I did see someone uh, point out that he got a game ball from Coach Harbaugh, 
which I have to say really hurts the Harbaugh didn't know anything about it argument. Why, why are you giving the game ball to a random film analyst, Harbaugh? He's admitting stuff by trying to explain how he wasn't doing anything wrong. Esquire, you're a lawyer. Um, I'm going to trust your opinion on this. Because I can picture lawyer you watching this saying, shut up, shut up, quit talking, quit talking. <laughs> or keep talking. I'm not sure what side of the law you find yourself on the most, quite frankly. But I kind of picture everyone as a defense attorney trying to be like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Whenever <laughs> I watch anything like that. I know you're mostly in civil stuff. But again, I don't necessarily know. All attorneys want their client to shut up. That that feels consistent with what little I know about such yeah. things. <laughs> but again, yeah. like he already lost his job. I don't think there's anything that can be done to him civilly. There's nothing to be done to him criminally. I, you know, quite frankly, other than the payday from the Netflix documentary, I don't know what he stands to gain from it other than no. the payday. Like, yep. I don't know if he has anything to gain or lose other than money. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure Netflix paid him a pretty penny for that. Yep. All right, I think that's it. I think that's all, all we got here, Jerry. Esquire confirms, yeah, there's no way he can be punished. Yeah. Nothing he did was actually illegal. He's wasn't an assistant coach illegally accessing Ohio State uh, practice material. Which decidedly is illegal and could even fall under computer crimes. For stealing Ohio State practice material. They weren't just stealing. They weren't just stealing signs, people. They weren't just stealing signs. And uh, this is now the second incident. Barton. Where someone was accessing Ohio State practice footage. Maybe y'all need to quit sticking that shit on computers. Or maybe you need an IT security guy. Who's also a big fan who might, you know, help you out a little bit if you need an IT security guy, Ohio State. Just, just, just let me know. <laughs> just let me know. I may be able to help you out. <laughs> Here's my resume. Look at it. I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> Ohio State, pay me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys out. All right, that's it. That's the end of today's show. Uh, I already asked Kyle about Kyle's Corner. Uh, we are going back to doing bands twice in a row uh, just to simplify things during the week. So we will once again be doing Playing to Vapors. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters once again. These are Playing to Vapors. <laughs>